Hey folks, so tonight I've got a uh, special treat here. I've got one of these Game Boy Color IPS kits here. Um, you'll have to forgive me if I look or sound a little bit different here. I'm back to using my Lumia 950 because my Samsung, my brand new S10e, is uh, having some difficulties. That's, that's another issue for another video. Anyway, I've got here one of the new-ish uh, IPS backlight kits for the Game Boy Color. Now, I have done one of these kits before. Uh, I actually did in this Game Boy here, uh, this exact same kit, but uh, there was, there, I, I did run into a few issues and allegedly the kit has been revised. So we're going to try it out and see if it's working any better. First, I'm going to try it in a uh, brand new Game Boy Color just to do like a, a normal full install. And then we'll try it out in this Game Boy Color and see if there's been any improvement. Um, you know, was there just an issue with the particular kit I got in this one? Or is there some strange issue with this Game Boy Color or, you know, whatever. But anyway, here's what you get with the kit. You get the uh, actual motherboard conversion um, electronics here with the ribbon cable already attached. You've got your two touch sensors, one for brightness, one for color palette. I don't know which is which, but it doesn't make too big of a difference. Uh, allegedly on this new revised version, we have the um, hardware brightness and palette controls, but I've been told that this version of the kit actually has that hooked up. Uh, we've got the same screen as usual. And then we have the uh, insulation stickers that it comes with. Uh, the idea is you take these stickers and uh, apply them to this stuff because it could cause some shorting issues. But it would be nice if they came pre-applied, uh, pre but at least they're pre-trimmed. It's not too big of a deal to get them stuck on here. This one is... I was just saying how it's nice how they're pre-trimmed, and this one is quite a bit longer than uh, it needs to be. But we're just going to leave that. All right. So, and it also comes with this double-sided tape here, which I'm not going to be using because I'm not going to be doing a permanent install here. Uh, like I said, I am going to be switching this kit around in a few different cases, so it's not going to live where it's going. So our victim tonight is a dirty but perfectly working Game Boy Color uh, stock otherwise. I did go ahead and clean this thing up the other night when I did that gold Game Boy Color, uh, just in case I'd need a backup console, and luckily I didn't, so I know this one's already cleaned up. But anyway, we're not going to be doing this kit here, or this case. It's kind of gross. Um, I don't feel like cleaning it up. Also, full disclosure. And I apologize for this, but I'm also not going to be doing any case trimming. If you want to see how to trim the case, or at least how I trimmed my case, um, go ahead and check out my previous install video on this. Uh, aside from a few of the issues that I had with the kit itself, it should be the basically the exact same video. And I'll throw a link in the description. So, like usual, six screws on the outside there, and then three more on the inside. Oops, good lord, I'm throwing my screwdriver everywhere. Now, this kit does not require any soldering, but... Um, there are some options if you can solder that will make the install a little bit better, I think. But I'll get into that in a moment. So to get the screen out, just go ahead and give the case a little twisty poo. The adhesive should pop out. 
and there we go. Should come right out. We'll set that aside. No, we'll set the case aside. I don't need the case. I'm not actually going to be installing in this case, like I said. But we would like the screen because we would like to get some numbers here on power usage, since this is a new revision of the kit. And the numbers might be different. And where is my test game? There it is. Test it out, Pokemon Silver. Already set to the right voltage. So on an OEM game, 2.4 volts, stock Game Boy Color, it pulls about 64, 62 milliamps, give or take. Not terrible, not great. But, plug in this new screen here. So I am noticing quite a bit of noise coming from the speaker, but that could be coming from my power supply. I do also have my finger on the bare PCB, which is apparently causing erroneous brightness and uh, palette detection. But we're, we, it's not fair to judge that with uh, how I have this hold, held right now. So we can't switch it back though. Of course not. That would make things easy. taking my finger off the kit and putting it back on seems to do that. Um, so I'm not going to get a very good reading until I get this back together. I guess let's go ahead and get started on that then. Alright. It does work though. Or at least it looks like it works. So far so good. So let's go ahead and get started with the Game Boy Color motherboard itself. And you do need flush cutters for this. I like these CHP 170s. They're really cheap, really decent quality. Um, I've used these ones to death and the cutters are all completely chewed up now, but it'll still work for this. We need to cut this huge um, pool of solder and battery connector. This needs to be as flush as possible, as, as flush as we can make it. It's not too much to ask going at it with these flush cutters, but you do need to take small nibbles. And we also need to trim these 
pins flush to the PCB. And that's quite a bit easier, but you're going to want to, uh, I'm going to start on this side. You're going to want to engage safety squints because these will uh, fly off at the speed of sound. And I'm just putting my finger over it to uh, prevent myself from going blind here. All right, and that's it. Next, we're going to put just a little bit of capped on tape down as insulation and protection. Not strictly required, but it makes me feel a lot better about it, so why not? If I can get this, there we go. of the shell I intend on installing this in. I'm going to try and give this as small a footprint as possible. All right. And just like that, the motherboard is prepared. We're all done. Next, we would go ahead and trim the shell. Let me just clean up a wee bit. Okay. And that would involve cutting out this entire top area and this entire bottom area here and a little bit in the D-pad area. So you should end up with something. Oh, go figure. I just found that Game Boy Pocket screen I was looking for. Um, should end up with something that looks a little bit like this. You have that trimmed right there, this trimmed completely flush, and this trimmed completely flush. Which brings me to uh, something that I, I, I guess I want to show off. Uh, they sell these pre-trimmed Game Boy Color shells now. Um, you can use these. For the install, it looks like there's still a little bit of cleanup that needs to be done, regardless. But it's certainly easier than trying to trim this yourself. Especially if you're going for a clear build. It does look pretty good, I think. Even though pretty much all the trims are under the lens anyway. But even the ones that aren't, you can hardly see. And then that it just drops in like that. No bracket required. No adhesive. Just sits right in there. Don't forget to remove the protective film. Like I said, this kit's not, this, this isn't going to be a permanent install, so I'm gonna leave the film on. Okay. I'll disconnect this. So I'm not paranoid at accidentally ripping it off. Let me get this lined up. It is a very tight fit. Okay. 
So yeah, pre-trimmed shells are actually uh, pretty nice, I think. Good option if, if you don't mind going aftermarket. I'm just going to reapply this because it was slightly off. All right. Looks good to me. All right. So as far as connecting this goes, do not sit this down and then fold that down. That is a very good way to see how the screen is kind of floating over the plastic here. There's just a bunch of empty space. It's a very good way to break the screen. You need to hold this up at an angle. And I know I did that in my last video. I got lucky. I didn't break anything. Just like that. Now I'm going to use a little bit of capped on tape to hold this in place. All right, so I'm just gonna stick a little bit of tape, literally just to prevent this thing from wiggling around too much. Now it's still gonna move, but good enough, I say. You know, in hindsight, I think that tape goes on the other side. Because it doesn't make sense to have it on both. Uh, where did my tweezers go? I think that'll actually solve two problems. Because it is slightly longer. Put that there. But it doesn't stick worth a damn. That's excellent. Yeah, I don't know what to do about that. That's nice. Okay. Sorry, I'm a little bit short-tempered today. Um, my phone has been driving me up the wall all day ever since it installed an update yesterday and everything has well one thing has stopped working but it that one thing has prevented me from using my phone the way I want to use it and so now I've just done a full factory reset on it And I just have a feeling that's not going to solve my issue. Why did it? It is a factory unlocked device, yet after the update yesterday, it keeps trying to download a sprint update file. And of course it errors out because I don't have sprint. Uh, but then it just tells me it's going to retry again in an hour. And every single time it, it checks for an update, it locks up and I can't use it because it's checking for an update. And then the update fails. And then it just checks again in an hour. Oh, we probably should have put this in first. Because it does not appear to fit with the screen. That's frustrating. That's okay. Because we didn't glue it down. pretty nicely. Oh, forgetting buttons, huh? Those are kind of gross. Uh, shoot. It's 
suppose we could use these. No. I'll just use the gross ones and um, don't judge me. But like I said, it's not permanent. We need to trim this a little. I promise I will clean them eventually. We need to take just a bit off the top. Actually, no, I can't. I just, I, I can't. I'll be right back. I'm going to clean these. Don't worry. I cleaned off all the grossness. Uh, okay. They're mostly dry too, so we should be good. Oh, shoot, I need start and select buttons. One sec. All right, I think, I think everything cleaned up pretty nicely. We're still a little wet, but I think it should be fine by the time I get this put together. Okay, and for the A and B buttons and D-pad, I have Wait, a special. Good lord. Okay. Found these and decided, hey, I'm gonna try these out. Be pretty cool. Okay. Let's go ahead and put this back together. Now these aftermarket shells do come with new buttons and screws and everything, uh, but like I mentioned, will mention, past tense and future tense simultaneously um, in a video I made on this, but likely will upload after this one. Um, the aftermarket buttons, I mean, they're usable if you have nothing else, but it's by far within your best interest to use your, to use as much OEM parts as possible. Um, the aftermarket buttons, I mean, they do work. It's uh, certainly an option, but you'll be much happier with OEM. And hang on, I forgot something. Same thing with the screws. The shell does come with replacement screws, but they're uh, they're not great. If you use the screwdriver that the shell comes with, if it comes with a screwdriver, this one in particular did not, but uh, some of the other ones do, um, you're going to have a bad time when you're, because these shells are brand new. There are no threads in the plastic. You are creating the threads as you install the screw. And the screwdrivers that, those cheap screwdrivers don't usually have the right bit on them. And it's just, it's, it's not worth spending the time and getting frustrated with it. Okay, let's do, so they want you, oh shoot, I should put this under the ribbon. I can bring it over there. Okay. So, as I was about to say, they want you to put it on the um, IR sensor or IR window. And if you're using the parts that came with the aftermarket shell, um, you might as well because these aren't transparent anyway. But since I'm using an OEM one and um, IR functionality will still work as long as I don't block this window. So I'm going to bring this over here. I'm going to take my tweezers, peel off maybe. I'll just stick that right there. 
happens right up in the corner. And I know it sticks out a little, but that's okay. We'll do the same thing for this one. But in the opposite corner. Stick, damn you. Okay. Didn't get it positioned perfectly, but good enough. All right, before we get too much further, let's try it out on the meter now so we can get a good measurement of power usage. kill the lights so we can see the screen nicely. So, and again, there's a lot of noise coming from the speaker, but that's very likely related to my power supply. When I get this thing running on batteries, we'll take a better look. Oops. The problem with these uh, clips is if you adjust it too much, it won't work or it'll release. Anyway, so in game, I think we're at max brightness and this kit does remember brightness settings. Uh, it's pulling just under 300. That's the palette switch. And it looks like switching palettes, I don't think it does anything to power usage. If it does, it's within margin of error. It's pretty negligible. Uh, but this one should adjust the brightness here. So it looks like we were at max brightness, which is just about 300 milliamp hours. And then minimum brightness is about 180 milliamps, not milliamp hours, excuse me. And then each step brings it up about 15. Yeah. More or less. And let's see if it remembers settings after a power cycle. So I set it to minimum brightness and black and white, and it jumped into minimum brightness, but I don't think it jumped into black and white. It did not. So I'm guessing it remembers brightness settings. One more. Yeah, but I don't think it remembers palettes. Let's try one more time. Now we're at max brightness and blue. It reset back to the default palette, but we're still at max brightness. So yeah, it'll recall brightness settings, but it won't store the palette settings, which I think is probably for the best, uh, at least on the Game Boy Color kit. Um, on the Game Boy Pocket kit, maybe not so much but there isn't an IPS version of the Game Boy Pocket kit yet. There's just that TFT version. So let's try, let's keep putting this back together. And let's run some tests. does fit my battery terminals just all sorts of fucked up so it wasn't lining up
Oh, nice. And that screw post stripped out. That's cool. didn't. Okay. It should fit all the way together. This is a, uh, this is not a great shell. I think OEM is better when, whenever possible, but I wanted to check out one of these pre-trimmed ones anyway. Aside from this screw post stripping out, notice it just keeps spinning. It's excellent. Um, okay. We'll just remove that for now. Aside from that screw post stripping out, I mean, I'm pretty happy with the shell otherwise. Oh, let's try, um, not alkalines, let's try chargeables. And no. Yeah. Screw it. Sorry. Can't decide. It's on max brightness, I believe. Let's see if it boots easy flash. Looks like it's having no issues, so that's nice. Maybe they did fix that issue. Uh, let's try scrolling bars with reset. Bring that in. And so here's what we're looking for compared to the last kit. Uh, the previous iteration of this kit had an issue where um, basically it was just dropping frames. Uh, I was also having some um, some glitching on the screen. Uh, sorry, I have the other kit right here. I'm just bringing it in so we can compare the two side by side. Uh, but I'll have to test the glitching in a moment. Where's my brightness control on this one? I don't remember what I did. did I put it under the lens? Well, I don't know what I did, and it's not working, so we're going to try and match this one instead. So just as a reminder, when the S in scrolling crosses the left side of the screen, it issues an LCD reset command, which uh, a lot of kits struggle with, except for the like all the cheap all-in-one TFT kits. Let me see if we can angle that a little. Okay. Um, this kit doesn't seem to have a problem with it, but you notice every now and then there's it, it's kind of jumping around. You might have to be watching this video in 60 FPS to really catch it, but it should be perfectly smooth, and it is not on either kit. It's not like not regularly irregular if that makes sense but it's not perfectly smooth it's not reproducing the frame rate like it should be uh, so it's still having that issue if we compare this to the funny playing kit um, the funny playing kit is perfectly smooth but uh, on um, most model Game Boys, except for their vision 06 there's that uh, errant pixel column in Game Boy Color double speed games. Um, so unfortunately it looks like they did not improve that. Let's take a look at the uh, 
take a look at Pokemon Silver now, see if we can't get it to do that glitch again. Yeah, I couldn't help myself. I had to make it look... Oh. Lighting. I had to make it look like my other one. Anyway. So, specifically what I was doing... Is I was literally just running around. And, uh, you... You'll have to check out the other video. Maybe I'll... Or a timestamp or something. Um, but I'm just running up to the other town so we can compare it exactly as I did it in the other video. And you'll have to forgive me if uh, my camera cuts me short because uh, because reasons. I can only film in like 15-20 minute segments. I'm already at 15 minutes, so... Oops. This membrane sucks. I should have, uh... should have just stuck with the OEM one. I will say, though, so far I haven't seen any of those glitches. Also, the speaker is significantly less noisy. As in, uh, I'm not hearing all that extra white noise, so that was my power supply. There is one thing I'm noticing, and I did notice this on the previous iteration of the kit. Uh, it's kind of weird, but this, this last column here is duplicated. So I don't know, uh, you can see, look at that flower especially. I don't know if I just have a full extra column of pixels or if my second to last column is being cut off. I don't really know how to check that. But I will say I'm not seeing that, um, that random display glitching that I was seeing on the other kit. So maybe I just got a defective kit. But I'm just going to keep running around for a couple minutes and see if I catch anything. Um, I think I just saw something, but I wasn't actually looking at the Game Boy, so I'm not 100% sure. I'll have to review the footage. But when my camera cuts out on me in the next couple minutes or so, I'm going to take a moment to take both of my Game Boy Colors apart. And I'm going to swap this into the uh, purple one here. And we'll check again if the new kit solved my issue with the display glitching. But so far it's looking really good. I do have to say, because I'm looking for it, I do see every now and then that the kit is dropping a frame or two. Uh, but it doesn't, it genuinely does not bother me. It's not, uh, because it's not regular, you know, it's once every, like, five seconds or so. It's, it's just, I'm not noticing it unless I look for it. On some of the other kits, it really, really bugs me. Like when I did the um, all-in-one, like the original all-in-one with the high vision IC, where that was dropping a frame every single second, that was very noticeable and that was very distracting and I hated it. But this, I don't even notice it unless I look specifically for it. That's pretty cool, you can use these color palettes. Now, I know most of you are thinking, well, what's the point of color palettes? It's just Game Boy Color. Blah, blah, blah. Well, not all games support using the Game Boy Color built-in palettes, uh, like specifically the one I'm playing. Granted, this is a full-color game, but some games like Pokemon Yellow are not full-color, but you still can't use the color palettes on them. 
Whereas on this thing, you can just switch to black and white and pretend you're playing on a DMG. Or, I guess for that matter, a Game Boy Pocket, but with much better battery life. But yeah, I'm not seeing any of those glitches that I saw on the original kit. And I've reproduced it as much as I can. I'm using the same flash cart. I'm using rechargeable batteries. I have it on high brightness. So either I got a defective kit or they fixed whatever issue that was. So I am I'm very pleased with that. I guess I'm going to take a quick break here. Uh tear these down completely one more time and we'll swap this kit into the other Game Boy and see if it was just my Game Boy which I did try multiple motherboards by the way I was having issues with multiple motherboards but I didn't try this specific motherboard but yeah we'll just swap the two and uh, I'll be back when that's done All right, so I finally got them both swapped, and here's what I'm thinking. It was probably a combination of both, because this one on the left now has the new confirmed working board, and I can't get it to boot either the Easy Flash or the EverDrive. Uh, I have the EverDrive in it right now, but the Easy Flash would just boot loop and keep going through the startup sequence. The EverDrive, when I try and start the game, it resets and then brings me back to the menu. So, I just, I, I can't start games. These batteries, uh, all four of them were in my DMG. So, they, they're not fresh, but, you know, they, they're both equally dead. This one on the more power-hungry Easy Flash seems to boot just fine. And I haven't really played with this but I don't suspect I'm going to run into any of the glitches. I don't know. Um, which is kind of weird because this is the board that was glitching in this Game Boy Color. But it's really weird that it would do that in two separate Game Boy boards. Oh, never mind, I did just see a glitch. The whole screen flashed white for a second. Let's see if we can get it to glitch again. So ultimately, I guess, maybe it was just a combination of things. Now, if I bring the brightness down on this one, it should boot just fine. But this one boots just fine on max brightness, so I don't understand why this one won't. Oh, we're already over the other area. And of course now neither of them are acting up. Such is life. I suppose I could put them both at max brightness though. They are both at max brightness. The uh, right Game Boy is just, it's running the same game, but the time is set tonight for whatever reason. I can't keep the two in sync, I don't know why. Ah! See that? 
on the right one. Might have to rewind the video a bit. Just a few seconds. But okay, so I did have a bad kit. And a bad Game Boy. That is both liberating and frustrating at the same time. Because I was having trouble, I was having problems with it, and I couldn't figure out if it was the Game Boy because I still had problems with it when I swapped out the kit. And then I, or when I swapped out the Game Boy, and then when I just swapped out the kit right now, I was still having problems. So, after seeing the glitch there on this one, and after seeing zero glitches on the left one, I'm feeling pretty confident that they resolved that glitch issue. Um, but it looks like the power consumption issues are just related to my shitty Game Boys. So overall, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, interestingly, this is the new kit. Let me see. I don't see that pixel du or that column duplication issue on the new kit, but on the old kit, I'm seeing it. I don't know why it's on one but not on the other. So if you look at this last column here, you can see the flower goes right to the edge and that's it. But on this one, if you look at the last column, you can see the flower goes right to the edge and there's just a glitch right now, I think. You can see the flower goes right to the edge, but this this whole column is, is uh, longer than it should be. And looking at the two side by side, I think, I just have a whole extra column of uh, data. My phone is really tilted. Hang on. Because on this one, this looks like how it's supposed to be. There's only one pixel between this post and the edge of the screen. Whereas on this one, we still see that one pixel and then that whole extra row. So I, th I think that's what it is. It's just an extra row. It's not a... Uh, it's not that the second to last row is dupl or yeah, it's not that the second to last row is being overwritten. There's just an extra row of pixels. Um, I guess it's better than the alternative where you're losing screen data. You just have extra screen data that's extraneous, but there you go. But I did see that even when this kit was still in that Game Boy. Alright, so I guess let's, uh, I guess I should start wrapping this video up. The verdict at this point, if you can get one of these kits, they're alright. Um, I still think the Funny Playing Kit is the better buy, especially now that the manufacturer of this kit has switched to a different LCD. I believe I got one of the last few kits with the old LCD. Um... These LCDs are manufactured by LG, as in the phone company, uh, whereas the new LCDs are manufactured by a company called Topoly. Just saw a glitch again. Um, allegedly, they are significantly lower quality than the LG kits or the LG screens. I do have a few of the screens on, my, on the way to me, so I can do a uh, full comparison. Right, I'm feeling pretty good seeing all those glitches now. Um, but I've heard uh, Valder has checked them out and he's just talked nonstop trash about them. But of course he's biased because he has the LG screens and the other company does not. But just saying, if that's what ends up happening, if those screens are as bad as Valder seems to say then since they're basically the same price, you know, the funny playing kit is by far the better buy. Um, until then though, I don't think you can go wrong with either kit. That being said, I think the current shipping kits are topoly, not LG. So long roundabout way of saying, um, I recommend this kit if you bought it a month ago, but not anymore, not going forward. 
it's all right. It's it's not great. Um, I'm really glad that they fixed the glitching issue that I've been having, that I've been seeing. Um, I've heard, but I still haven't tested this, maybe I'll have to test this out in a future video, that they actually finally implemented the hardware brightness controls so you can solder up all those, those pads on the back of the kit and get those connected up to um, the buttons instead of having to use the touch sensors. And that's probably for the best. But, I mean, I still have problems like this with these kits, and that just doesn't sit well with me. This doesn't happen on the funny playing version, even with this motherboard. Granted, the funny playing version does not, uh, does not store the brightness level, so every time you start it up, it starts at the default level, which is lower than this. So maybe this issue would happen with the funny playing version if um, if it did recall if it did store the brightness level because it does work on low brightness. It's just annoying having to you know swap around your screen every single time. Uh, I do want to end this on one final quick test. Oh, there's already batteries in it. Look at me thinking ahead planning ahead. Got another Game Boy. Now, the kits in both of these Game Boys are made by the exact same manufacturer. One of them is the uh, TFT kit. Uh, which one is which? Is that the palette? Let's see here. Yeah, this the one on the right is the TFT kit. The one on the left is the IPS kit that I just did, of course. You can see how much bigger the screen area is on this one, but just look at how smooth this is. Like there's no frame dropping, there's no skipping around. Like what's what's going on with that? Why did that how did they get it so right with this kit and then get it so wrong with this one? What what happened there? I mean, obviously they couldn't just copy the code because both of these screens use completely different LCD protocol, but I mean, clearly they know what they're doing. What happened? Uh, but I don't know. Let's do one more thing. I'm just curious if these have the exact same palettes. I assume they do because that code is probably copy pasted. Except for that one. Oh wait, that might've been the same thing but the viewing angles on this one are just garbage. But anyway, yeah, there we go. Um, if you have one, it's a decent kit. If you're looking to get one, I don't think you should get one. Uh, but otherwise, I think I need to wrap this video up and end it here because I'm going to ramble all night otherwise, and we know how dangerous that is. So I just want to give a quick shout out to Retro Game Repair Shop again for not only providing me with the first kit, but for also, you know, sending me another kit when I uh, when I showed off this defective one. So that's super cool of them for not only you know giving me the first kit to take a look at, but for actually giving you know for seeing that I got a bad kit and then saying, well, hey, that's not that's not good. Let's fix that. Uh, so they sent me a good kit. I sorry guys, it's like 1:30 a.m. and I've been dealing with all sorts of cell phone shenanigans and uh, I, I I think it's working now so I think going forward I can keep using this phone uh, I guess uh, I guess that's that thanks for watching guys have a good night